we want you to stop right now before you make an alt in Wrath Classic. You see, unlike Shadowlands, there are no crazy catch-up systems in Wrath of the Lich King, which means you have to invest a lot of time making sure you choose the right secondary. And if you make the wrong decision, you will have wasted months worth of time and effort. So how do you know what alt is best for you? Today, we will explain the different archetypes of melee, ranged, and healers that you will encounter in Wrath Classic, and once this is done, you will have a better idea of what alt you should be making for Lich King PvP. This, of course, assumes you've already selected a main, which is a daunting task for any player new to the game. Our community has even asked us how to choose their main in our revamped Ask a Pro section that utilizes the brand new Discord forums feature. And while everyone who joins our Discord server, link in the description, can access these forums, it's skill-capped members who gain access to create threads and ask any PvP question to our team of pro players. That includes personalized help and support with macros and setting up your UI. It's no secret that we here at Skillcapped always want to produce the content that you need. And that's why we've added a new course at skillcap.com that shows you how to pick your main for Wrath PvP. This course will teach you about each spec and help you understand the inner workings of how every class works at a high level, making you more confident in your PvP journey. And once you choose your main, you can dive right into our exclusive class courses, which teach you the same damage and healing secrets used by rank 1 players. And with hundreds of arena commentaries, you can learn the strategies that pro players use in their own arena games while climbing to rank 1. We work with the best players in the world to design guides that put you ahead of the competition, and we even offer a money-back guarantee if you don't gain at least 400 rating while actively using our website. Don't fall behind! Visit the link below for an exclusive discount offer and start unlocking your true potential today. Anyway, back to the video. We want to start things off with melee DPS, who fall into two distinct categories in Wrath of the Lich King. If you watched our Shadowlands video on choosing an alt, you may remember this graph. And as it turns out, this fundamental division in class design exists in Wrath Classic. On one end of the melee spectrum, we have the Brawlers. These are the types of specs that want to run in, maximize uptime, and deal as much damage as possible. The most common spec that falls into this category is Arms Warrior, who are arguably the best melee in the entire game. Unlike Shadowlands, where Arms Warriors play more or less a support role, Wrath Warriors are very Zug Zug. One key point of separation is Intervene. In retail, this ability is a team defensive CD used precisely in one-to-one -one cooldown trades. In Wrath, Intervene is utilized more for mobility than anything else since it only redirects one physical attack. Of course, this means it can be used to soak things like sap off of blind, but the majority of its uses will be as a gap closer since mobility is more limited in Wrath PvP. In any case, Arms Warriors are the gold standard of the brawler melee archetype in Wrath Classic, so if doing unhealable pressure while being an unkillable tank sounds interesting to you, then Warrior might be worth picking up. Another common melee brawler is Unholy Death Knight. They are one of the most aggressive melee specs because of their main win condition. Summon Gargoyle is how most games are won in DK comps. Generally speaking, the goal is to maximize value out of Gargoyle by applying as much pressure as possible during its 30 second duration. This usually involves chaining micro CCs together, like Grip, Pet Stun, and Strangulate with other external stuns to outright win the game, while Gargoyle is chunking away at enemy health bars. This win condition forces DKs to play very aggressive in many comps, and it's no surprise that they often pair with Arms Warriors for one of the most historically Zug Zug comps in WoW's history, TSG. But above all, there is one spec that takes the cake as the most aggressive melee in Wrath of the Lich King. Can you guess what it is? It is Enhancement Shamans. If Arms Warriors are the gold standard of the melee brawler category, Enhancement is its bastard cousin. That's because Shamans have one win condition, Wolves. Yes, if you watched our video on the most broken Wrath abilities, this shouldn't be a surprise. Feral Spirit is insanely over budget but that's because it is how they win in Arena. The game is basically won during Wolves, or lost if the enemy manages to survive. This is why Shamans typically play comps like Beast Cleave, since the combined damage of Wolves, Bloodlust, and Bestial Wrath with a healing reduction effect are able to complement the explosive damage profile of an Enhancement Shaman. Finally, we have our final aggressive melee, One-Handed Ret Paladins. Yes, some of you in the comments have been mentioning Preg spec, and it just so happens that we have been working closely with Preg for our Ret Paladin courses. The One-Handed Ret build sacrifices Divine Storm in favor of Reckoning in order to get more Art of War procs, which translates to more overall healing and slightly more magical damage, making it really good into other melee DPS, especially since One-Handed builds use a shield, giving them more physical damage reduction. However, this build requires a lot of uptime to work well, since it is so dependent on melee swings. This means One-Handed Ret Paladins need to stay constantly pushed in, which is a key difference between the more standard Two-Handed spec. 
So with our most iconic brawler specs out of the way, let's move over to the opposite end of the spectrum with the Tactician Melee Archetype. Here we only have one class, Rogue, and just to be clear, we primarily mean subtlety but are also including assassination and to some degree combat if you are a psychopath or something. Anyway, just like in Shadowlands, Rogues in Wrath Classic need to adopt a hit and run playstyle. That's because they are one of the squishiest classes in the game and prioritize control over consistent pressure. This is why, for the most part at least, rogues typically play with mages or priests since they benefit more by controlling the pace of the game with their lockdown in small bursty windows rather than pressing the W key at an enemy healer all game. Even Subtlety, who has two charges of evasion thanks to preparation, can't possibly go toe to toe with something like a warrior. Backstab damage is so laughably low into plate that it's no surprise rogues will often run away for restelts, even in one of the fastest paced expansions of all time. At this point you might be noticing some specs missing, which is why we have an in-between category for melee hybrids. And no, we don't mean hybrid in its normal definition. By hybrid, we just mean melee DPS that aren't zug zug brawlers or hit and run setup based tacticians, but something in between. First up, we have the standard two handed ret paladin build. This spec plays a middle ground role, sometimes a brawler, other times a tactician. Unlike its one handed counterpart, it is more frail into melee DPS and especially vulnerable to casters. For the most part, this is why ret paladins often play around pillars, looking to push in for small bursts of damage and pull away before things get too hairy. You might be wondering though why this doesn't make them a true tactician, and that's because they still have a lot of utility, meaning they need to be constantly interacting with their team while also maximizing uptime whenever possible for more instant cast healing and damage. Unlike a rogue who can kite all game and still win, a rep paladin really wants to be pushed in whenever possible in order to increase the amount of contributions they can make with damage and utility. And finally, we have Frost Death Knights. Yes, it may come as a surprise that Frost isn't as zug zug as you might think. Remember, Unholy has one main win condition with Gargoyle. Unfortunately, Frost DK doesn't have any offensive cooldown quite as strong and instead relies more on Hungering Cold as a setup tool and Unbreakable Armor as a damage modifier, both on a 1 minute CD. In a way, this mirrors the Shadowlands Frost DK playstyle, where games are built around interactions with Pillar of Frost and Blinding Sleet, which is more or less the same type of setup combo. In any case, this means that Frost DKs can adopt more of a push and pull playstyle, since they aren't funneling as many resources into a long offensive cooldown like Gargoyle. And here we have a complete picture of the different playstyles of melee DPS. Now let's be very clear, you can play whatever alt you want, but if you want to play something similar to your main, then just select a melee DPS within your circle. For instance, if you play Arms Warrior, then you might feel comfortable playing Enhancement Shaman or even Frost DK, but if you want a different melee experience, you could also alt a Rogue, bearing in mind that it has a completely different feel in high level arena gameplay. Once again, choosing an alt is always a difficult choice, and even after you've made your decision you still have to learn everything about your new class. Luckily, Skillcap makes that easier than ever with detailed courses for every class, including arena commentaries that take you into the mind of rank 1 and professional players. Take advantage of our money back guarantee and gain at least 400 rating while actively using our guides. Visit the link below to get started. Now we've arrived at the first archetype of range DPS, starting off with the zoner or wizard category. These are the types of specs that love the open field. Their dream is to stand still and pump out as much uninterrupted damage as possible, which usually winds up being unhealable if the enemy team doesn't pillar. It shouldn't come as a surprise that Affliction Warlock fits in this category. One key distinction between Wrath and more modern expansions is that sustained damage actually matters, and it just so happens that Affliction Warlocks have some of the highest sustained damage in the game partially thanks to the incredible dispel protection of Unstable Affliction. The bane of many casters is spammable magic dispel, which typically limits some forms of damage output. But with UA on multiple targets, priests and paladins have to think twice before mashing dispel. You might be wondering, wait, doesn't Affliction Warlock have fear and coil? Shouldn't they be setting up kills? Well, certainly these can be setup mechanics, but more often than not, they are simply utilized to put enemy targets in more vulnerable positions to do damage. One spec that UA Warlocks might play with are Shadow Priests, who coincidentally also fall into the zoner category. Just like Affliction, Shadow Priest dot damage actually hurts. They are not some wimpy hybrid DPS limited by weak output. No, they are absolute damage gods. While they do have some utility in the form of a defensive dispel, they would rather be free casting damage in the open field, especially since they have their own potent dispel protection in the form of vampiric touch. And because of this, it's no surprise that Shadow Play is one of the most popular SP comps throughout the expansion since it punishes enemy healers for being lazy. 
Just like Warlocks, Shadow Priests have some setup tools with Silence and Psychic Horror, but these spells aren't really used for perfectly calculated CC setups, and more often than not will be simply used to lay on top of their tremendous pressure. And speaking of punishing healers, we have our last zoner spec, Beast Mastery Hunter. Ah, <sighs> look, we know what you're thinking. BM in the same category as Warlock and Shadow Priest? Well, yes, let us explain. BM Hunters are absolute damage beasts. Well, for a few seconds. But really, there's nothing more they want than to spam as much damage as possible into one target in the open field. They don't care about perfectly calculated CC setups. No, they just want to do damage. Any meme you've heard about Beast Mastery Hunters over the years partially stems from the class design in earlier expansions, where they literally embodied the phrase, live fast and die young. And with our zoners out of the way, it's time to look quickly at the only true setup based range DPS in the game, Frost Mage. Frost is in a very unique position in Wrath of the Lich King. Much like Rogue, their playstyle sacrifices consistent pressure in order to make the most out of small burst windows, involving a combination of procs and CC to set up kills. In fact, the majority of the time spent in Arena as a Frost Mage involves fishing for Fingers of Frost and Brain Freeze procs by literally using Rank 1 Frost Bolt, which does little to no damage. Yes, that's right, Frost Mages intentionally do zero damage in order to build towards more potent kill setups with their Burst and CC. This is clearly distinct from the Wizard or Zoner archetype, since Frost Mages don't really offer much pressure outside of their small bursty windows. Even if allowed to free cast, Mages are still one of the squishier classes in the game, which means they can be easily punished for trying to interact too much with the enemy team. Because of all this, it shouldn't come as a big surprise that rogues and disc priests are their primary partners, since their control toolkits synergize perfectly with one another. By now though, you should have noticed that we are still missing a lot of ranged DPS, and they fall into a middle ground between both archetypes. So who are the hybrid ranged DPS? First up is Elemental Shaman, who are one of the most popular ranged DPS in this middle category. Despite what you might think, Elemental Shamans aren't really true wizards. Their damage is incredibly strong, but it's not consistent in the same form as an Affliction Warlock or Shadow Priest. Instead, Ellie Shamans deal most of their damage in periodic waves, mostly through Lava Burst. Although one of the best abilities in the game, it comes with an 8 second cooldown and requires some initial setup by applying a flame shock first to become more effective. This means that Ellie Shamans don't really care about spam casting damage because their only lethal damage combo comes once every 8 seconds, and not to mention the fact that mana preservation is a big deal in earlier seasons, which means padding the damage charts can quickly snowball into going oom. Um. Shamans can play aggressively, pushed into the enemy team, but they also might need to be a bit more evasive at times when up against bigger threats. More than anything though, Elemental Shamans are a massive roadblock for any comp. They are masters of stalling damage, being disruptive, and having multiple forms of utility, which situates them between both ends of our ranged DPS. In the same spot, we have Destruction Warlocks. Just like Elemental Shamans, their primary lethal spell comes attached with a short cooldown, not to mention the fact that their accessory damage spells also require some setup, with Conflag needing an active immolate on the target in order to deal damage. This can be a bit tricky to deal with, as Priest and Paladin teams will often spam Dispel Immolate to prevent some pressure. So as much as Destro wants to be a true wizard, it really doesn't have that luxury, and instead needs to pivot a bit towards control, using Fear, Shadow Fury, and Death Coil in order to set up kills, avoid disruption, and play around spam dispels. Once you realize this, it should become clear why Ellie Destro is such a popular 3v3 combo, since these two specs effectively have the same damage profiles and similar goals. Moving on, we have our remaining Hunter specs with both Marksmanship and Survival. Unlike BM, these specs are significantly less aggressive and tend to play a more passive role by avoiding damage and setting up kills with CC. That's because they actually have the tools to do so, mostly due to Scattershot, which is one of the most reliable ways to set up Freezing Trap CC combos. While Marks and Survival can do a lot of damage in the open, they're still incredibly squishy, meaning they can't stay in the open for very long, especially against something like an Affliction Warlock or Shadow Priest who will rip them apart. Instead, they generally opt to play near a pillar, interact with the enemy team when needed, but then avoiding as much damage as possible in between setups. This makes them somewhat like Frost Mage, but they need to play slightly more aggressive due mostly to the fact that they have an important debuff to maintain in the form of aimed shot. Next up we have Arcane Mages. Yes, Arcane is actually pretty good in Wrath, and even though it is noticeably weaker than Frost, its playstyle is a bit more flexible. Again, one of the biggest limitations of Frost Mage is that its consistent damage really doesn't matter. Well, that is definitely not the case for Arcane Mages, who are able to deal a massive amount of lethal damage by themselves just with some huge obstacles, like the fact that all of their damage is on one spell school and it generally costs a lot of mana. 
This can make Arcane a bit more awkward in longer games where multiple forms of disruption are present. On paper, Arcane would like to stand still and free cast its most threatening damage, but this isn't always possible, and without proper setup tools like Deep Freeze, Arcane needs to play around other win conditions like Arcane Missiles procs, which means avoiding damage until having the procs needed to land the W. And finally, we have Balanced Druids, who again really want to be wizards, but don't really have the offensive power to do so. Starfall is pretty much their only win condition, which means their consistent damage isn't nearly that threatening, especially when half of it can be spam dispelled. Without any dispel protection and with janky casted damage, Boomkins need to adopt a hit and run playstyle similar to more modern versions of the spec. Their goal is to survive using spam cyclones on multiple targets until Starfall is available again. So for brief moments in the game, they are a true wizard, doing nearly unhealable spam damage, but other times they are trying to simply delay and play until next. And here we have a complete picture of the range DPS categories. You may notice that we've also included fire and demo in this roundup. These specs are incredibly rare, with demo acting like a pseudo BM hunter, thanks to its main cooldown, Metamorphosis, which gives them substantial damage with partial CC immunity. Fire mages are a kind of weird, highly mobile, and generally ratty form of dot class with some instant cast damage. As such, they aren't really wanting to properly set up kills as much as they want to just pump out damage and be annoying. Again, if you wanted to choose an alt that is similar to your current main, then stay within your circle. Otherwise, if you want a completely different feel, then hop on over to the other side. The choice is yours. And now we've finally arrived at healers, where once again we have two main categories. The first we are calling interactive. These are the types of healers that want to be pushing in with their team, supporting with damage or CC. Disc Priest is the best example of a highly interactive healer. They are, without a doubt, the most offensively capable healer in Wrath Classic, able to contribute to kills with meaningful damage. But perhaps more importantly, the reason they are so aggressive is because they have the best dispel in the game, with dispel magic removing two buffs or debuffs with each press. This allows them to keep their teammates active, all while harassing enemy players with spam purges. What helps Disc is the fact that they have a relatively versatile healing toolkit and rely on different forms of healing to manage multiple situations. Although one of their main weaknesses is getting trained by melee cleaves, they can play around this by having more precise control, pairing with synergistic classes like rogues and mages. Surprisingly, Resto Shamans also fall into the interactive healer category. Just like Elemental, Resto can be highly disruptive, blocking CC with grounding and tremor, wind shearing casts, and harassing with purges. Mechanics like this, while also being great on defense, are amazing tools for keeping up momentum. Although Resto might not have the damage profile of a Disc Priest, they still have Lava Burst, which can actually hit pretty hard. And with the best team-wide offensive cooldown in the game, Resto Shamans offer their team unmatched damage support, especially against teams that lack offensive dispels. The one thing that really holds Shaman back is their relatively weak healing output and poor mana, which is why short, explosive games are typically preferred. Now we must venture to the opposite end of the spectrum with our lonely non-interactive healer. This title belongs to Holy Paladins. While they might be the best healer in the game, they are also the most passive. The reason is mostly due to the design of their healing toolkit, which is mostly based around Holy Shock, a spell with a very limited range. This along with a range based AoE defensive means they have to be more pushed into the enemy team, all while avoiding CC chains and damage from enemy players. Take it all together, Paladins are difficult to master position wise and often need to avoid any risky offensive play that sacrifices their positioning. To a paladin, a pillar is your best friend. But finally, we have our last arena viable healer, Resto Druid. Yes, Druids represent a middle ground between aggro and passive playstyles. There are times where Druids want to be pushed in with their team, supporting with kills by cross seeing multiple targets. Even though their damage might be weak, their support with control is unmatched. But unlike more modern versions of WoW, Resto Druids are super squishy and are generally really unforgiving if they ever fall behind. There is no overgrowth in Wrath Classic. If you fall behind on healing, you have to spend 5 globals getting back to where you started. This means that druids have to be more flexible with their game plan, recognizing when it's worth it to push in, and being willing to fall back when needed. And here we have our three different healer categories. Again, play whatever you like, keeping in mind that holy paladins might not be as offensively capable as something like a disc priest. Every playstyle can work, but not for high level competitive games. And at this point you might be thinking we are done, but some of you may have noticed we are still missing one important spec. No, not holy priest, yuck. It's Feral Druid. 
Again, the goal of this video is to try and give you a sensible way to pick an alt, and although Feral is a melee with an energy bar, it's definitely not like a rogue. No, just like retail, Wrath Ferals have one of the most unique and dynamic playstyles out of any spec in WoW's history. They are relatively squishy, but only in cat form, have great damage, but not in bear form, can do great control, well, in any form. Feral is the jack of all trades, master of none, even in Wrath of the Lich King. Its melee playstyle is relatively hit and run in cat form, but also requires them to hard cast Cyclone and off heal in human form, and tank a bit of damage and interrupt while in bear form. If you want to play a Feral as an alt, go for it. Just know it might be different than anything you've ever experienced in PvP. And no matter where your alt journey takes you, we have you covered at skillcap.com. Right now, we have hundreds of videos, including class courses and arena commentaries, instantly available at your fingertips. One subscription gets you access to Wrath Classic and Retail WoW, allowing you to stay ahead of the competition no matter what expansion you play. Take advantage of our rating gain guarantee and visit the link below for an exclusive discount offer. Alright guys, we hope you learned something about selecting an alt for Wrath Classic. Let us know in the comments below what you're planning to main or alt, and let us know what videos you would like to see next. In any case, thank you all for watching, see you soon.